All right, welcome back to training camp. Countdown to my first Ironman, California, October 22nd, 2023. All right, it's gonna be in Sacramento. I'll give you a quick little update on testing my theory today. So the last two weeks on Wednesday, which is the first running day, I've had a great, great run. Best two, ru two runs. And what I figured out was that when I have rest from the last running day, which is usually Saturday, I have four days of rest from running. Now I'm still training, I'm still swimming, I'm still cycling, but I've noticed that when I have at least four days of rest, my running, I have the best running day. So technically today should be my best running day of the week. My legs should be fresh, but instead of four days, I now have three days of rest. Now in the last video, I updated that on Sunday that my body was fatigued. Now my legs were, or my knees were swollen, but I think that it's not a swollen or the swelling that I had like I had after the race. This is more like fatigue swelling. So although it's not as swollen as it was before, but the swelling is going way faster. So that, this is why I know like this is just fatigue in my legs. Again, I can, I can tell the difference. My body, I've been in my body for the last 44 years. So I can feel the difference. So uh, I think it was just fatigue. I ran, I think 16 miles last week. So I think that's the most so far since the marathon. So my knees haven't got used to that distance yet. So we'll see how this week goes. So today should be fresh-ish, three days as opposed to four, see how it feels. And uh, I'll do the same route that I did last time so I can keep it consistent. Good thing is that today's only a 45 minute run and then I have a 45 minute bike ride right after. So uh, I'll be working out for the next hour and a half. Just wanted to give you that quick little update. Uh, we will see you on or in the next video. But before I leave, I was asked a very, very, very good question this morning. My client this morning asked me like with this very serious face. And I was like, uh-oh, I thought he was gonna tell me something like some bad news or something. And he looks at me, he's like, where do you get your motivation from? I really didn't know how to answer that. I guess I never really, I mean, I've asked myself, but I really haven't asked myself because I know that this was a deep question. It wasn't a surface question. So it, it made me think. And what I'll do is I'll share my thoughts after the run and cycling. I just gonna want to contemplate it more. You know, he asked me that this morning, so I've had work, so I really haven't had time for myself to really kind of delve into that question. So I'm gonna get into that on my run. I'll get that. I'll get into that on my cycling, and then when I come back on the next video, I'll share what I feel or what I think is what's motivating me. Again, very good question. It's very, it's very few questions that really kind of stop me in my tracks and that one really stopped my tracks. So I'll think about it some more and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, welcome back. So finish the run and I finish the cycling. So today my legs do not feel as fresh as they normally do when I have four days of rest. So I guess there's a difference between the three days and four days and it seems to be that fourth day is the best rest for me to feel fresh. But with that being said, I did get another award for the fastest 5K that I've ran so far. So fresh or not, I guess the speed is picking up from the last time I ran the 5K. So I don't know what the numbers are, I just know that I got the badge. So I thought long and hard and yeah. So I thought long and hard about that question. And what it comes down to is accountability. I think accountability plays a huge role in my discipline and what it really boils down to is my stepdad he held me accountable he not only held me accountable but he taught me how to prepare and i guess as i'm doing all this all, all the preparation it's all the stuff that he taught me and, you know the more and more that i thought about it the more it's really starting to make sense so the discipline comes from him because he was very uh, very harsh <laughs> he fathered with an iron fist, which is good because uh, I needed that type of energy in my life to keep me in line. So it was very good that he was in my life. It was very good that he ruled with that iron fist. And with that iron fist came a lot of work as well, a lot of labor work. So we had a you know, pretty big yard in our house and every Saturday was yard work day. We cut the grass, the hill, and that only you know did it take us you know hours upon hours to do it but instead of getting a weed whacker you know he would give me clippers so manually 
walking down the edges and cutting these hedges all manually. So which was like, it, it didn't make sense, right? But in hindsight, it, it all makes sense because what he was doing was he was teaching the, just the work ethic, you know, hard work that it, you know, how it pays off. So all that hard work and all that labor, I knew it was every, every Saturday, right? Like without fail, that's what we did. And because I knew that that's what was in store every week, there was really like no complaining. And because there was no complaining, it was just like, okay, let's just get this over with. It's, it's inevitable. So I guess all those years of, you know, turning off the, the complaining mind is just like, okay, let's just get this over with. I really have taken that mindset to all of my sports, everything that I've you know, really, really have worked hard with or work hard on all that discipline. It was one of those like, okay, I just, let's just get this over with because it's going to happen. It's just, it's inevitable. So the discipline comes from him and what he put me through, you know, growing up. And again, I'm not complaining. It's has served me wonders. So I'm so glad he raised me that way. He used to be a drill sergeant in the Marines. So there was a lot of uh, physical and psychological challenges. So it was very hard to break me down mentally. Man, this flies. It, these flies are breaking me down. It, it's really hard to break me down mentally because he has pushed the bar of how much he can break me down and has broken me down. So it comes from him. So I really appreciate you know, him as a person and how he raised me and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. So long answer, accountability. Oh, sorry, the accountability is making these videos. If I make these videos and I just, you know, I don't work out, if I didn't, display the discipline needed to do this and I, I wouldn't be if an effective trainer so the accountability of you know people are watching and the accountability of this is how, what people have to do to prepare for something major like this you know so that's the answer accountability man these flies <laughs> so the accountability is the main answer so i'm going to get off this this video before you see me lose my temper with these flies <laughs> all right welcome back to the outro of the week 18. No, it is a week 18. Week 18 video. So this is where I grade my performance for the week. So I'll first start off with swimming. I give myself an A+. A+, I hit all my goals that I needed to hit for the week. I hit two days of swimming and I'm really, really starting to feel comfortable in the water. I'm starting to feel very comfortable with the strokes. I'm feeling comfortable with the overall feeling of swimming. Totally understand that's just the feeling of the stroke. You know, that's not including being in the river, you know, having to, to sight, having to, you know, to compete with other people. You know, that's something that I'm not gonna be able to mimic, you know, the other people, but I can and will at some point start to swim open water. I know I have a, a trip in, I think September, to go to Tahoe. So I know that I will be open water swimming at that point, but uh, I do need some open water swimming before that. So if you guys haven't been following, or for any of those people who have not been following along since the beginning, one of the things that I uh, expressed is that uh, the fear of sharks <laughs> and i know i'm going to be in fresh water and i also know when i'm in tahoe it's fresh water but my survival brain right part of the brain that just wants to survive i can't convince it that there's not sharks down there so as funny as that sounds that's what challenges me in open water back in i don't remember what year it was but uh i did the john muir trail and the john muir trail is you know from point to point 220 miles and it's from Yosemite all the way down to Mount Whitney. And it's a three week hike, backpacking. Like you're backpacking for real, you know? And it's also part of the PCT trail. There's no like civilization. You can, some parts in the trail that you can kind of venture in, uh, but you're in the Sierra Nevada mountains in the middle of nowhere. And when I was preparing, you know, I was telling myself, oh, I'm gonna take my goggles because I want to go swimming in open water because there's tons of open water all up and down the trail. I mean, everywhere. So the second campsite, so that's the second day, third day, somewhere in there. So we, we get there, my partner and I, and I got there first. And when I saw that we, our campsite, or camp area was gonna be next to the water. I was like, this is my first opportunity to swim open water like I've been wanting to. And I brought my goggles, you know, like in backpacking, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, 
you want to make sure that you carry the necessities and have the pack as light as possible. So even though goggles don't weigh much, it's just unnecessary to bring them, but I made it a goal that I wanted to go swimming in open water. So I was very excited to get to the, uh, I put my bag down, start changing, put my goggles on. And I'm like, whew, I'm like, all right. So I tiptoe in, submerged myself and I started to, and just the depth of so much water, the fear just kicked in. Oh, sharks. I didn't get more than two feet. I got back up, turned around, and that was the last attempt or the first and last attempt of open water swimming throughout that whole 20 day trip. I'm trying to think if I did any other, no, no. Yeah, first and last, so I brought goggles for no apparent reason. So yeah, so again, the, the brain, that's what's my challenge for, uh, for swimming in the river. We're gonna be in the river. We're gonna be swimming down the Sacramento River and the American River. And it's just the, the vision, right? Like just having the goggles and seeing below you. I don't know, it just freaks me out. Anyways, so that's, uh, that's what I need to get used to before the race. The last thing I need to do is start thinking sharks are under me during the race. Now, I say that all jokingly, but there is that part of the brain that I need to turn off because if I can't control that brain, as irrational as it may be, if I can't turn it off during the race, and that's going to affect everything my heart rate, my breathing. So that's something I do have to work on. So A plus on the swimming, long tangent. All right, and the second one is the cycling. So the cycling this week, I did all my, my times, I did all my uh, the miles needed. So A plus. First time that I did a, a two, hour, uh, two hour ride. That was the longest that I had to do so far. And that's what I had to do this weekend on Saturday. And then following the two hour bike ride, I had a 45 minute run after. So that was interesting. Legs felt, uh, you know, <laughs> they felt like uh, very fatigued legs. Yeah, cycling, A plus. All right, running, I give myself an A plus. So this week, three A pluses all the way across. And the reason I'm giving myself an A plus is not only because I did all the work. Again, I, I got a badge for having one of the fastest 5Ks. Now. When I get those badges, it's not that I'm running only a 5K. It's, I guess, you know, I was running four or six miles or something. And it's, I guess it's the, I don't know if it's consecutive or if it's three miles within the whatever miles that I'm running, that it's logging my success time. So I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm getting these badges. So, and I do see that there is improvement, but the, like I said, the times and the miles are increasing, right? It's starting to, uh, to work my way up and I've been talking about my spring the spring is definitely uh, there or coming back when I'm fatigued the spring is not as springy so I definitely need to work more on the endurance as well so that's that will come in time but the good news about the running is this in my my whole observation here the running is not becoming so like when I first started the thought just the thought of running a mile or two miles you know, like, ah, I don't want to do this. You know, like, ah, this day is a horrible day. Exaggerating, obviously. And now the other day I had to run an hour and 47 minutes. And again, I have never ran that long outside of running a race. So, it's, you know, an hour and 47 minutes is kind of still a sticker shock. Like when I see it on the workout program, I'm like, whoo, man, that's Sunday. You know, so I might start you know, I'll prepare, get a little slow, you know, I'll start slow, taking my time, getting ready. But once it starts, I'm getting used to the length of time of running. I'm getting used to the psychological part of, you know, I'm not every mile that I'm hitting, I'm not looking at it. It's like, oh man, I got, I got, you know, seven more miles to go, eight more, you know, whatever it may be. I'm not having that struggle, that talk anymore. So, you know, that talk will be there, but it's not dominating. So that's, that's the good news. So I guess the majority of the unpleasantness of the run is just the the mind fighting you. So the mind isn't fighting me as much because the the endurance of time is increasing. So it's becoming easier. So the having to do the work is not as uh, tough. Although the times are increasing and the distances are increasing, the sticker shock still might be a shock. But once the work starts, it's getting easier. So just kind of give you guys an idea of how much work is being put in into this. Last week, I logged in eight, no, 19 hours of workout time. 
So 11 to 12 hours of it is my Ironman training. And then the rest of it is my jujitsu training. I did tell myself that I was gonna ease or, you know, ease off, but I can't. So I have to confess, man, I have not, e the only thing I've eased off was drilling. And drilling is more important than the rolling for learning, but I'm using the rolling as, you know, a cardio, right? It's uh, not aerobic, but anaerobic. So, you know, just to have the different challenges of the systems or challenging the systems, Aerobic just means activity with oxygen, right? Um, I can jog for a long period of time. That's aerobic training. Um, I could, you know, the rowing machine, for example, anything that has to do, any cardio machine that you can do for long periods of time, that's aerobic training. Now, anaerobic training is without oxygen. You're using a different energy system, right? The energy in your muscles versus your cardio. If I did uh, weight training, for example, and I started doing a bench press, I wouldn't be able to do a bench press for a half hour straight like i would be able on the treadmill because that eventually the energy in my muscles will run out and then i can't do anymore so the anaerobic training is different and that's the anaerobic training that i get from jujitsu so i have my aerobic training for the iron man and just to kind of give my you know and this is my thought it's just to give my body a different challenge i do my rolling for my anaerobic now i didn't expect to roll as much as i'm rolling i need to ease off but i just love to roll i really really do it's, it's an addiction so <laughs> keeps me sane you know how many how many other places can you go and you die every night and then you live again right it took me a long time to think about that one day or think about that in jujitsu when you tap right in a either a joint manipulation or a choke so when you tap it signifies to your to your uh, opponent or your partner that you've submitted like hey i'm done like you won right like in a video game you just lost right you died right someone's choking you you tap he stops or she stops if you were fighting for your life i mean it's it's done it's over so in your psychologically your brain is going through this experience day in day out you're dying every single day but you're coming back you're like reliving kind of like groundhog day like the movie every day you just come back over there's a, a, it's hard to explain that you die every single day and you go back to it that keeps it it does something to, to an athlete i you know the all the jiu -jitsu, well the majority of jiu-jitsu people who i know you know there's a humbleness because you die every single day kind of weird th way of thinking anyways so that's uh i don't know i yearn for it i guess it's it's a, a to be humble, you know, like, you know, you're you, just because I have a black belt or just because anyone has a black belt doesn't mean that you can't be humbled by any lower belt, a white belt, doesn't even matter, fight's a fight. So that humbleness in fighters comes from dying every single day. That's my opinion. So I, I guess I need it in my life. When I took four years off of jujitsu after my first four years, there was something that was missing in my life. And when I got back on the mats, it was that. So yeah, I gotta ease off of my training so I'm not doing 19 hours of training every single week. So if I only, if I cut out jujitsu and I only did the uh, Ironman training, 11 hours. Man, 11 hours I feel like I can do in my sleep. So I need to cut down, keep my body fresh. Speaking of my body, my body feels great. Uh, my knees feel, this is funny. My knee, right, my knee after all these miles of running will swell. I've talked about that. It's not the pain swelling, but it's more the fatigue swelling. And then, which is kind of cool because then on Monday, after three or four days of running last week, is my swim day. So I kind of, it's like a rehab of the knee. And then Tuesday is usually my first cycling training. So then I do the cycling, which kind of, it's rehab on the knee. So by the time I run on Wednesday, knee feels great. And then I beat it up all weekend and then I go through this rehab in the training. So not only not only do I do tr uh, rehab at home or recovery, I'm like doing recovery in my training as well. So it's pretty, pretty neat the way it's just this cyclical motion of tear down, rebuild, tear down, rebuild, tear down, rebuild. It's pretty neat kind of to see it go, you know, to experience all that. It's pretty neat. So I hope you enjoyed me rambling on uh, for this outro and uh, leading up to 17 weeks, 17 weeks away, man, time is flying. So we'll see you next week.